Well, good afternoon, friends. Um, had just a moment here and was working on, I don't know that I'll get all this stuff set up in the basement here like I've got it for a while. So I thought I would just do a quick uh, video on some new stuff on that I've added to my acoustic rig here, specifically the Meyer Sound UPA-1Ps. I've been kind of lusting after these speakers for a long time. Um, I first heard them uh, many years ago, I was actually speaking at a conference and was in a pretty good sized room and uh, was standing kind of right here, you know, waiting to walk up onto the stage and was just admiring how good it sounded. The speakers before me were playing videos and stuff and there was sound and the the intelligibility was was kind of second to none. So I just made a mental note of the speaker and then afterwards I went and talked to the sound guy and was like, hey, where are the subs? Where are the other speakers? And he was like, uh, there's not any. These are just the two speakers. So I've kind of been really interested in these for a long time. Um, there's more of them that are becoming available because Meyer actually just released the, these speakers have been made for 30 years, I think. Um, and they just actually announced the new version of these. I think they're called the Ultra Xs. Um, and so they include a, a pole mount, which these don't, which I'll talk about here in a second. Um, and they're much lighter and, um, you know, I'm sure sound better. So uh, these are becoming more available now. And you can see, you know, I've found them for relatively good prices in the past, but they've been part of, you know, like a sound company and folks are taking them out and doing gigs and stuff with them. And so they literally look like crap, you know, they're just... They probably sound great, but just aesthetically, they look pretty bad because they've been in the back of trucks and on stages and stuff like that. These actually happen to be in part of a permanent installation. And when they got pulled down, I bought them uh, from a guy off of Reverb. Uh, we set up for freight shipping. I actually bought the sub that goes along with these as well too. So just one of the subs um, and got it for a song. And so these are great speakers. Um, there's plenty of specs and stuff out there, but one of the reasons I made this video or decided to make this video is because Believe it or not, as as uh, popular as these speakers are, I can't find any videos, at least anything like this, uh, on YouTube. So uh, anyway, this is how they're set up. They're pretty pretty basic here. You know, you got a an input, and then you've got an output. Use the power con power connectors. I imagine there's some other. I think for the uh, Meyer has a, a system that you can plug in. You can plug it in over Ethernet and you can manage it and stuff like that. So I think that's what this other bay is here. You could add another card or something in. Um, and then I'll show in a little more detail and I'll put the link to these uh, in um, in the description or in the uh, the notes below the video. But this is the uh, the Gator stand. Um, the ID stand, the Gator Works ID stand. These are the old um, on stage stands that I've been using in the past. When I bought these speakers, one of the main reasons I bought this, and I'll show it to you. Um, actually, we'll just go ahead and move over here to the EAW. So these, I've got a video on my page already on the YouTube page talking about the EAWs. These are great speakers. Since then, um, uh, long story short, uh, these actually fell out of the back of my truck. Um, so I was going to a gig, had them loaded up. Luckily, I had some uh, custom covers made for them, so that kind of kept the road rash uh, down on the rest of the speaker. But uh, put them in the back of my Tahoe, pushed the button to close the gate, thought everything was good, parked backwards in my driveway. So I pull out my driveway and I go uh, up the incline, uh, push the gas, go up the incline out of my cul-de-sac, and... Uh, I look behind, I hear this awful noise and I look behind me and I see both of these speakers rolling around, literally rolling uh, on the street behind me. And so I thought for sure these things were, uh, history. Um, and, but I just went ahead, put them back in the truck. They, I picked them up and shook them around. They did, nothing was moving or, uh, the, uh, you know, nothing fell off. So I took them to the gig and plugged them in and they work fine. So the thing that I wanted to show here specifically on this gator stand, and you can watch a couple videos, looks like they put some relatively light um, speakers on. It's got this little clasp right here. And so you open the clasp and what you can see is that the, it's actually moving up. So what I'm gonna do is push it down. This is, I don't know what that is. You'd have to pick a speaker up maybe, you know, four feet maybe. 
But watch when I let go of that. So this is a 47 pound speaker and it's actually gonna raise it up and then I can just close that and it's locked in place. And the other thing that's great about this too is that they have, there's an, uh, a pole that comes out of this sleeve here so you can push these in and bring this up. This is a perfect example. This EAW speaker needs the smaller, otherwise um, it's not gonna fit on this piece right here. The Meyer, on the other hand, on this part, it's gonna move around too much. It actually needs to fit on this. And so what's great about these stands is that I can, they're interchangeable and I can get the, the Myers on without them moving around and I can get the EWs on without them moving around and I don't have to carry any other hardware or do anything else with me. Um, I, I, I check these out because I have uh, their microphone stand and you can see they kind of match on the feet but this is the best microphone stand that I've ever had. And so when I saw uh, that these guys had um, this particular stand and that it had, it's not hydraulic, but um, that it just, you know, helps. So basically what I read is that it's a 50 pound, um, it's like having a 50 pound assist. Um, and so it obviously pushed these speakers up. It won't push the Myers up. So if I come back over here and open this up, open the clutch up. Let's see, where is the clutch here? You see, <laughs> it wants to come straight down and it will not push the speaker up. However, I can actually lift with one hand this 80 pound speaker and then get it you know, up where I need to and get it in place. The other great thing with this speaker, it's so heavy now all I have to do is get it that far off the ground. Um, and so uh, that's great. So anyway, this is a fantastic, uh, again, just a closer look at the, the other thing that's great about these two, this is not, uh, um, the AWs and, and the Myers are very different speakers, um, but does not get super hot. Uh, I've run some music through here. I've been down here kind of rehearsing and doing some stuff and it never gets even hot to the touch really. It just stays a little bit warm. So that's pretty nice. Um, the other thing I wanted to show real quick too, these are the mounts. I'll put, uh, I'll put a link to these in the video as well or in the description as well. But uh, one thing about these UPA one piece is that there's no, there's no hole. There's no uh, hole in the bottom to, to use for a pole mount. So you gotta make your own. So what I ended up doing was uh, drilled a couple holes, which uh, I wasn't super happy or super fan, but there was no there was no way to use any of the existing stuff to do this. So you drill a couple holes and then you can buy, you go to Lowe's or Home Depot or something and you can get these screws. So they actually look like a screw on the outside. You drill the hole a little bit smaller than what the screw is. And then you just, this, you can see it has a hex top here so I got a kind of a hex screwdriver thing and then just you know put it into the and there's a little bit of a flange there but then this goes back on top and then it comes with these all this comes with it it comes with the mounting hardware here and so these with the with the washer go down and I and they it's been super sturdy so can't this is some like a polycarbonate plastic or something but if it's holding these 80 pound speakers and I'm not really worried about it um, it should work for probably anything else that you're going to put on. Uh, just over here to the console and stuff, I've got a few other videos that show this stuff. None of this stuff has really changed very much. Still continue to use the Q16. Uh, it's a great board. There's a number of different boards out that I've seen um, where you could just rack mount everything and you wouldn't even have to have anything on top. The Soundcraft UI is a board that comes to mind. But I like having faders. I like being able to reach back and turn something up or down. Um, I hate, uh, you know, having to have an app or something that I have to have in front of me because if the wireless is jacked up or my thing runs out of battery, just, you know, there's all kinds of different things you can think of and you don't have anything to control this anymore. So this obviously has an app and you can control it, um, remotely, that's fine. But if you don't, if something screws up and I actually have a, a an access point back here so I can connect to it remotely to gig, but if all, if all hell breaks loose, then you always have the controls still using the, uh, the Kemper Profiler, and if you know the Kemper, you can see here again um, with the, with the acoustic gigs, uh, basically just using the EQ and the stereo effects. Um, 
not using amp simulations or cabinet simulations. Uh, I do from time to time bring my 335 out and I do have obviously patches where I can switch over and they're normalized so that the volume is the same as when I'm playing my acoustic guitar so I can interchange them. And it's nice to be able to do that, to literally you know, punch a button on the controller down here and go from playing an acoustic guitar to a 335 through a Princeton. Um, so it, it's pretty, pretty hard to beat uh, this configuration. And since everything is already all wired up, when I get to the gig, all I have to do is just, you know, um, get the controller set up where I want it to get where I want it set up. I do run a wireless. Uh, I've got an Audio Technica, but I'm actually about to switch it out with um, this Line 6 G70. And the only pedal that I use, so I come into the wireless and then I come out of this Cali 76, this Origin FX Cali 76. One thing that's great about the Kemper. Uh, is, I mean, there's a lot of things that's great about the Kemper. The emulations are fantastic, but the stereo effects are fantastic. But the stomp section over here, the, the pedals, the distortion pedals, overdrive compressor pedals, not so great. Um, and hopefully they get working on that. But there's nothing even close that comes, you know, this pedal basically is having a pedal version of, a, of an 1176, uh, you know, uh, limiter compressor. Uh, in your you know in your chain and it's fantastic and so i don't really use it as an effect more just to even everything out i do a healthy combination of finger picking and strumming and um and this thing is great it's you can boost boost the level a little bit um and it just is very transparent it sounds very very good uh from that setup and so again just the drawer down here uh keep you know picks cards extra strings keep our microphones we use the neumann km1 k KMS-105 microphones, extra cable, all that good stuff. So um, that's the rig in a nutshell. Um, so uh, again, if you have any questions around that, feel free, to, uh, feel free to ask. All right, switching over to selfie mode here. The, uh, the million dollar question probably is, well, what do you like best? Which speaker sounds the best? Um, and that's really an impossible question to answer. And also because these two speakers are very, very different from each other. Um, when you look at power, when you look at, you know, the EAW, I think is uh, a 90 by 60 dispersion. The Meyer is a 100 by 40. So the 40 degree vertical, 100 degree uh, wide. When you look at the power differences, um, you look at the DSP stuff that the, that the EAW cabinet has, um, obviously the speakers are different. The EAW is a 1.7, five inch horn. The Meyer is a three inch horn. The Meyer is crossed over at 1200 Hertz. I don't know where the EAW is, but it's probably different than that based on the size of the horn. So there's a lot of differences in the cabinets. Um, and they sound very different from each other, but they, they both sound fantastic. Um, you know, the Meyer speaker is very, I would say, uh, mid forward, you know, when you think about the design of the Meyer and obviously a bunch of live music uh, venues use these very same speakers, um, but they're also used heavily in theaters as an example, because and that mid forward gives you this really, really great articulation for voice and for vocals. So you can see these being used a lot in jazz music, acoustic music and then certainly in, in theater applications. Um, you know, both of them are built like tanks. I showed you the EAWs that fell out of the back of my truck. The Meyer is a almost an 80 pound speaker. I, I'm sure I could put a chain on it and drag it down the road and it would still function perfectly. So, um, you know, hard to say if, if they were both set up in, if I'd never heard either one of them and, and price wasn't an object and I just was gonna pick what, what fit my ear best, I'm not entirely sure. I really, I really couldn't tell you that since I know who, what they are and I know the differences between the speakers and the applications, that's one thing. But if they were just, if I had a random test, um, uh, I don't know which ones I would pick. They both sound really good. And the acoustic stuff that, that I do, I want what's be, I want what from the source, I want it to come out the speakers, you know, as close to as exactly the way that it sounds at the source. I play primarily Gibson, 
J45 pricing. I got all my guitars out. I've been setting up patches. Every guitar is a little different. So the EQs are a little different and levels are a little different. So I've been redoing some patches and stuff for all the different guitars, but I primarily play uh, an early 2000s model J45 and, um, and it sounds just like you're, that comes out of the speaker sound and like you're sitting in front of it. And then you running vocals through those Neumann microphones into speakers like these, it sounds just like somebody sitting and singing, but it's just louder. Um, so that's exactly what you want. So anyway, super happy with, uh, with all the stuff, the rig videos that I've done have gotten a lot of attention and uh, a lot of views and posts and things like that. So whenever I upgrade, the rig, I try to do a short video. And in this case, as, as popular as the Myers are, again, just hardly any videos uh, on the UPA one piece, um, surprisingly, especially for these kind of scenarios where folks are taking them out and doing live uh, perform live acoustic performances with them. So anyway, hopefully this was useful. useful. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Have a good one.